Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our QuickBooks webinar series, session two. It is Thursday, July 15th. It's scheduled to be 98 degrees today, which if you know anything about the valley, you know that's considered good weather. My name is Brian Salcedo. I am the project assistant with Fresno State Small Business University, where we provide a variety of resources and tools uh, for business owners. I will be your producer for this show, for this presentation. Uh, and before we get into the presentation, I do wanna talk a little bit more about what Fresno State Small Business University does and uh, some of our upcoming plans as well. Uh, so before we get started, I'll go ahead and share my screen. As I mentioned before, uh, we are Fresno State Small Business University. And essentially what our mission is, is to help businesses be competitive and stay competitive in the complex marketplace. Every year new businesses open uh, and now with COVID winding down, um, a lot more businesses are reopening uh, or they've already opened. Um, and so we just wanna make sure that we help small businesses uh, stay competitive in the marketplace. And on top of that, uh, we do help entrepreneurs realize their dream of business ownership uh, by gathering the resources uh, that they need uh, and, and researching the steps that they need to open their business. A little bit about our services. We do offer financial management services, things such as uh, cash flow management, uh, bookkeeping and accounting, uh, such as the QuickBooks training that we're doing today. Uh, we do offer loan application assistance. Uh, throughout the pandemic, we were helping small businesses apply for funding and COVID relief. Uh, we're still helping businesses do that. And we do um, also offer that service to farmers and veterans. Uh, we offer business planning and management. So this could be the development of a business plan, uh, which is good. It outlines the goals of the business and where they are projected to go. Um, and also if a plan, if a, if a business plans to apply for any type of funding, they are usually required to have a business plan. And so we help them with that part of the process. Uh, we do also offer business startup assistance. Uh, so if you want to create a business, uh, but you don't know where to get started, uh, you know, please sign up for our services and we can walk you through the steps and we can gather the research you need to get started on your business. On top of that, we do offer marketing services uh, such as marketing plans, uh, brand and logo designs. Uh, we do offer uh, websites to clients. We do social media and social media planning for clients. So if you're interested in any of these services, uh, you know, please sign up and uh, let us know what you need and we, we can help you with that. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we do offer energy efficient business planning. Uh, so if your business wants to become energy efficient um, and wants to know the best ways to go about doing that, uh, you know, please contact us and we can put you in touch with our partners that can teach you the best ways to become an energy efficient business. Um, and what uh, one thing that wasn't mentioned on here, we do offer HR consulting uh, through a partnership with Berkeley Law, uh, where we can set up a meeting uh, with you and the Berkeley Law Department in case that you do need HR advice or you just had an HR question, uh, we can put you in touch through our partners. Uh, the consultation is completely free. Um, so that if that is something you're interested in, you know, please sign up for services and let us know. Um, and we can definitely uh, put you in touch with that service as well. If you haven't already, please follow us on social media. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, uh, we're on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, YouTube and Facebook is where these webinars will eventually all be uploaded um, and you will all have access to them. Um, and Instagram and Twitter is where we uh, keep everybody updated on our programs and our upcoming events. Uh, we do have a website, uh, so if you do want to Google Fresno State Small Business University, there's actually a sign up button in our webs on our website where you can sign up for services. Uh, I will also post a link tree on the chat box, um, so you can just go ahead and sign up from there.
Si necesita interpretación en español, presione el botón de interpretación y luego presione español. Le invitamos a que haga comentarios en su lenguaje nativo. And now it is my pleasure to introduce to you our guest speaker for this QuickBook series. This speaker has over 20 years of experience using and teaching QuickBooks. Please help me welcome Cindy from All About Numbers. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking time to spend with us today. And I hope that by the end of the class, you'll learn, have learned one or two things about QuickBooks. And we'll start with sharing my screen. And let's see, here we go. We want this screen right here. Possibly, there we go. And just real quick. Uh oh, that didn't work. Let's try this. There we go. Okay, I'm going to minimize that. Perfect. Okay, I know they talked about the uh, interpretation, but this is a slide that shows how to do it in case you have any questions or pop something in the chat if you need help with that. And then today we're just, this is our second in a series of three classes for introduction to QuickBooks. We're going to talk about vendors, payments and checks today. And this is what we're going to be using is uh, Craig's Design and Landscape Services. It's called a test drive, QuickBooks test drive function. It's a fully functioning QuickBooks file. Anyone can use it. It doesn't cost anything. It's a great learning tool. It's a great tool for when you go well. I know I knew how to do that, but let's help me remember, because you can do any function in this test drive company. You can add a customer, create a service, import lists, you can add logos. It is a fully functioning QuickBooks program. And it is just an amazing free, I'll emphasize that free learning tool from QuickBooks. And if you go to that link right up there, you can, anyone can use it. And it's just an amazing tool to use. So let's see what we can do. And we'll go right to, looky there, Craig Design and Services, uh, Landscaping Services. And so what we're gonna talk about first today is, I'm gonna go over just a quick review of some basic QuickBooks things. So if you didn't attend the first class, then that will catch you up a little bit. And if you did, forgive me, I'll try to not take too long. But I just wanted to show a few things that are really uh, gonna be your friend in, in using QuickBooks. And one of them is this new button right here. And if you click that, so if you forget where it goes, because of course you can go through the menus, but you can also go through this new button. And that's gonna pretty much have anything that you need to do. So if it's to do with customers, invoices, sales receipts, credit memos, they're in that column. Expenses and vendors is gonna be here. Employees here. And other things are gonna be here. The bank deposits, your journal entries. And in one of my talk much about journal entries being, this is a beginner's class, but that is something you may need later on. And the other place that you're gonna need from time to time, not often, but from time to time, is this gear button here, okay? And this is for setting up your company. You can find any and all lists and everything in QuickBooks is a list, your customers, your vendors, your services, everything is a list. And one thing that you might need this for on a somewhat regular basis is if you use recurring transactions because that won't be in the other new button, that's only here. So. Uh, this is one you're going to need, and I want to note that this gear is for the entire QuickBooks program. As we go through, you'll see a gear on the individual, uh, either payroll or sales, they'll have their individual gear, and that those settings will be geared to whatever program or whatever 
category you're in, whatever menu you're in, the banking, the sales, that kind of thing. So those are just some things that are just that that new button's going to be your friend. Use it. It makes things so much easier. And uh, OK, that said, we're going to start talking about vendors. Vendors are the people that you pay. That is your PG&E, that is your suppliers, that's your internet service, it's your bookkeeper. So your vendors are the people you're gonna pay. And it's gonna be under expenses because it's the expenses that you're paying. So you can either choose expenses or vendors or just click double click, I should say, and it'll take you there. And then you can choose here whether you want expenses or vendors. So we want vendors. And I wanna show you this little gear. Remember we talked about this one up here that's for the, the entire program. Well, this one is geared to this screen, to your vendor screen. And so if there's something you wanna change, this is where you would do it. And this is gonna be generic to whichever tab you're in over here, whichever tab you're in, you're gonna have a, a gear for that section. And whatever is in there, it's gonna change this screen that you see. So you can have it, you need the company addresses. If you don't need the phone, we can uncheck that, it'll take out the phone. And we can tell it to include inactive, you're looking for somebody that you made inactive. So these are gonna, this gear is gonna affect this screen. So you make it user-friendly to you. So if you use that phone number, leave it in there. If you use the email, leave it in there. So that's a good general rule with that gear in that section. The other thing I'll show you is, see the little up arrow here? And this is gonna be in a lot of programs, uh, a lot of screens, not just QuickBooks, but you can sort the, by order. See, now it flipped the order. And now instead of the A being first, the end of the, this first. So if you're looking for someone and you want it in order, then it makes it easier to find. If you want to sort, sometimes email, phone, it's not letting you. Open balance, you can sort by that. But generally these titles at the top, if you click them, it will sort them in order. So let's click it again. And see, now it shows everybody that owes. See, so that can be useful in looking. So that's generic between whichever tab you're in and it can be very useful. So let's see, let's talk about vendors. We're gonna start with new vendor. And see right here is another button you're gonna use because this button as in the gear is going to be specific to whatever screen you're on. We're in the expenses from vendors so whatever is in this button is gonna be geared towards vendors. So this little button right here can be very helpful also. So if we use our drop down, we can import vendors or we can add a new vendor. Okay. If you're starting new with your QuickBooks and you have all your vendors in an Excel or you can export it to an Excel or a CDS file, then you can import the vendors. You make sure your categories match and you can do it in one fell swoop. It's not very challenging. It's actually pretty easy if you just take it step by step and it can save you a lot of time. Now, if you've already got your QuickBooks going and you manually entered everybody, that's fabulous. You can also do that, but if you have all of them or several of them, you can do them, import them as a list. So everything in QuickBooks is a list. So we're gonna do, we already have our vendors in and we're just gonna add a new one. So we just hit new vendor and it gives us this. And you can put as much or as little information, it popped right in there, didn't it? <laughs> oh, why in there we go. And I'm gonna put in my company name because and I wanna show you something. Now display name as, and that brings it, pulls it from here. But you guys know me as Cindy, but when you pay me, you need to pay all about numbers. So we just changed the display name and we have some choices. I wanna choose in this instance, the company name but you can do just Cindy Wyman, 
or you can reverse it because some people prefer that it's the reverse. So it just depends on how you remember things. So for this one, I'll pick here. And if you'd like, you can put in the addresses and the notes. This is an important one I want to show you. Um, available 24 seven. So if you have a problem and you need to call me, call me, it's fine. You might need to let me wake up a minute, but people get really nervous about their bookkeeping, about their money. The bank says they have this, they thought they had that. So I have had calls late into the evening to help people figure that out and be able to understand and know what's happening. So this note, for this vendor being myself in this case is important. Now you might wanna put their, their AP. So for AP, which is accounts payable, uh, you ask for Corey, okay? But whatever is pertinent to that vendor or customer, if you're entering your customer, it'll do the same thing. Then when you save it, it will show. So you can put in a phone number, you can put in their billing rate, we can put in the terms, and it's always due upon receipt for me and a lot of businesses, some are net 30, and you can put in the business ID because we can put in the social security number, or the business ID and your federal identification number. Because in my case, I need to get a 1099 because I am providing you with a service. If you pay me more than $600 for the year, I need to receive a 1099 from you, like a W-2 for self-employed. And we can default, this is always going to be professional services. Aha, look right there, bookkeeper. So that always will come up when you uh, enter something. And now we can save it. Now I wanna show you, if we pull it up, search, search right here, all, look at there, all about numbers. There it is. And look right here. Remember those notes we put in? That's right here. So, and then always, did we not put the phone number? We could always put the phone number here too. And I believe, yeah, if we double click it. We can put the phone number there. And then that will show also, because that would be helpful if you're needing to call someone, it's easier to be able to see it here than to click here, because this way you can just see it and make your phone call. So this notes is, it's easy to use, it can be very helpful, and it is on the, the customer sheet and on the vendors. So it's just a, a little tool there that can be very useful. And uh, I, I encourage you to use it because it can make life easier. Now down here on the bottom, there's no transactions because it's a new vendor, we haven't done anything yet. So, okay, once we have, the new vendor, we might need to pay someone. You have basically three, four ways to log your expenses and the payment. Some of them are a true double-sided accounting transactions, which means it's a two-part process. You enter the expense, then you enter the payment. So it's two transactions that together record your expense and record your payment. Okay, the other type is, it's just one line. You enter an expense, they call it a, an expense, and you enter it as one transaction. It's going to record the expense. You pay professional services for bookkeeping, and it's gonna tell you, oh, I paid that out of my checking account, or I paid it out of my credit card, whichever it may be. So depending on what works best for you and your situation, you can do it as a one transaction, which will record both, 
or you can do it as a double transaction, which will record both, but in separate transactions. And one of the reasons why you would want to do it in separate transactions is if you're doing truly a full blown accounts payable process. You have a stack of bills that you need to pay and you enter them, you enter a bill, you enter a bill, you enter a bill. And then after you've got them all in there, then you can go back and say, okay, I want to pay this one, this one, this one. And the others will still show due, but then you can process a payment for those. So it just depends on which works best for you. Uh, I tend to be a little old school. Uh, I like doing checks. Checks to me is one of the easiest ways to do it and to enter a, a paper check. I know some of you young people don't know what checks are or haven't used them much, but you write a check and you mail it off or you hand it to somebody, a paper check or an electronic check, I guess. But you would go to right here to your new button and we have check. So we're going to write a check. So it actually kind of looks like a check. You enter your vendor. Let's pick a vendor. Let's see who we're going to pay today. Who should we pay? We'll pay Bob's Burger Joint. We bought everybody at lunch. So it gives you it's from the checking account. And maybe you didn't pay it from the checking account. Maybe you paid it from your, your, your savings. Possibly a credit card. You can have credit cards also. There is one here. But you can do for credit cards. Let's see if we can make a new credit card so we can use it. So it is a bank account and it is, Sunshine doesn't even give us a credit card. Why is that? That's unusual. Hmm. I'm not sure why that's not letting us do a credit card. Let's, let's back up a minute and I want to look and see. Yes, we want to leave without savings. And banking, we don't have any. MasterCard, we do have a MasterCard. I don't know why it didn't show up. Sometimes there are little glitches with this. Not very often, I'm sorry it happened during a class, but it does happen sometimes. So we'll go back to writing a check. Okay, and let's see, will it give us MasterCard? Let's see, M-A-X. I don't know. I don't know why it wouldn't do that. We don't want to create that, so we'll close that. So we're going to pay with the Bob's Burger Joint. We're going to pay them out of checking. And just a little side note: when you enter your checking and your banking accounts today, you may have one checking, one savings, one credit card, or just one of whichever one. Put the last four numbers of the account. So it would be checking number one, two, three, four, whatever the last four digits are. Then if you get a new account, you'll be able to distinguish which one is which very easily. So, or you can put Wells Fargo checking. And then, so it's just whatever, use whatever name is going to make sure you know what account you're doing. Because as business goes and you grow, you may have more accounts, you may change banks. And that way, if you do that from the beginning, it'll make it simple going down the line, knowing what account you're working with. So just a little side note. And it's Bob's. We don't need a mailing address because we're going to give it to him. There's our date. We have a check number. And we're going to put meals. There it is. It's not travel meals. It's meals and entertainment. And it was $72.31. So, and we're not going to apply a customer, so we can do save. Now, that's going to pay that expense and put it under meals and entertainment. And it's going to take the money out of your checking. So, a check. Is, is a one transaction. It takes care of both sides, the expense and where the payment came from. So it takes care of everything as a whole in one transaction. So you can do either down here, a little drop down, save and close or save and new. So that's how writing a check works. Hey, Cindy, we have a comment from the sidelines. Yes, sir. Oh, it says, uh, can't you list this directly in the bank account window directly? 
Okay, say that again for me. Uh, it says, uh, can't you list this directly in the bank account window? Oh, yes, yes, you can. Yes, I'll show you. Uh, let's see. Let's save and close this and we'll go to the, I, th I think they're talking about the bank register possibly. Save and close. Oh, something's okay. No, there we go. Leave without saving. Yes, that's an empty transaction. So, uh, I think this is what they're talking about. Uh, you can go to the bank register. And this is the bank register. You can enter anything. Now, this is for all your accounts. This is for all your accounts. You can do this. Let me scroll just a little bit so I can see better. Right here. You pick whichever checking account or savings account you want. And then right here, you can do add check. And you can do any of the transactions right here. You can do any of them right on the register, just depending on what you're wanting to do. The reason why I like to show it the other way also is because for some companies, you use a class or a location. And generally when you enter them here, you can't use a class or a location. So then you have to go back at some point and put in your class or location or both, depending on what you use. And so I like people to know that they can do it either way. So if you want more information, you can do it uh, like I showed you with going to the new and picking check. You can put more information or you can always do it here if you just want to do something real quick. So you can do any transaction here. So uh, she, does that answer their question? Uh, it, it did. And she asked, uh, she had a follow-up. It says, um, I've heard try the credit card this way and see if it works there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be able to pick it from here. I don't know why it wasn't coming up in the other one, but yeah, it should come up here, the credit card chair right there. Yeah. But... If it was my QuickBooks, I would want to find out why it wasn't coming up the other way because it should. Uh, but maybe there's a reason we'd have to ask QuickBooks. I mean, they change things all the time, so little things happen. But yes, absolutely. You can go to the, the register and then you can do the same thing and add whatever type of expense it is. Yeah. So absolutely, you could enter it here. So does that answer her question, his question, their question? Oh, uh, yes, her question. Get myself in trouble here with pronouns. Uh, I wanna... Yeah, she, uh, she said thank you. Okay, good, good. Okay, and I appreciate the questions. So if anybody has a question, please please ask. I'm sitting here at a blank <laughs> computer screen, so I don't see you guys. So please ask if you have a question. I don't mind at all. Interrupt me. That's how it works or it's how it works better for me anyway. So, okay, so we'll go back. And so that's that's checks. Okay, now if you're a little old school like me and checks is a familiar term and a familiar way of doing it, it might work best for you. If you're a little younger and that doesn't click for you, it's gonna do the same thing, but you can enter things as an expense. And expense is going to do the same thing. So if you click expense, and see, it looks very similar. Very similar. And I bet you the, yeah, now the MasterCard will come up here. Maybe the check, well, MasterCard didn't come up in the check because it's not a checking account. So that's probably why, uh, now that I think about it. So you can pick your MasterCard if you do an expense. So. It might be simpler if you have several to enter. You can just do them as an expense. Uh, you can still enter a reference number instead of a check number. Uh, or that might be for an invoice number if you have a lot of them. But uh, let's see. So if we want to pay the telephone company, then let's pay it with the credit card. What the heck? And we today's date. Payment method, here we go. Now you can put check. If you want to do a check, so you could use it that way. 
you can do it as Dinos Hub, MasterCard, this one in case is a MasterCard, and you can add, see this add, you can put it what, whatever name you want or other type of payment. You know, you can put this is from owners, from the owner's account, you know, just whichever works, but you can just that way, this payment method when you do run reports and you go back and look for things, it might help if you're consistent with using this and putting these and naming them, what works for your company can be very helpful later on in running reports. Put a reference number, whether it's an invoice number or the check number, however you wanna use it. And here's our details. So we're paying the telephone company, the category would be, let's see, do they have a phone in here? Let's see what they got. Phone does not have two P's in case you were wondering. Uh, there we go, utilities telephone. And see how it's utilities then telephone? That way telephone is a subcategory of your utilities. So we wanna pay that. And this is the June statement. And our amount for our phone bill was $230 and 59. And these, in case you're wondering, it goes a little beyond a, a beginner class, but uh, if you want to pick billable, that means you can maybe for some reason you're going to, you need to bill a customer for the expense. So you can use that. Or if it's a tax, that's a tax you're paying. And then you put billable and then enter the customer's name. And so that would therefore be available to bill to that customer. So uh, it doesn't get forgotten or uh, lost. So those aren't really beginner things, but that's what those are if you want to do them. So again, we would do, you can do multi-line. Maybe they also do the internet. Oh, no. So let's do that. Let's do inter internet. And so we're going to add it because it's not there. So it's an expense. It is a is utilities down here somewhere. So, okay, we put it under miscellaneous, we're going to put the internet, and we're going to put it a subcategory under the utilities right there. So that's how simple it is. If you need a new account, a new category, when you're entering your expenses, after you do it for a while, most of them are there. But periodically, you come across one that, oh, you haven't done it before. That's how quick and easy it is to just do it on the fly. Very simple. You just click. Uh, select your account type, the detail type, a name, description if you need it. I don't, I don't usually use it. A lot of people do prefer to use it. It's just a personal preference. And you can do the subcategory if you want. So that you save and close. You know, like this is the utilities telephone, but this is utilities internet. So this is also the June statement. And the internet is... $212. So now we have one expense paid $442.59, played at once, paid with one payment, but it was two different categories. So that's why it's nice that you can do multi-line. You can just keep going. If you have several things on one invoice that you need to break out that expense. So this is really nice to have. And then you can also, uh, the memo, anywhere you see a memo, regardless of what part of the program it's in, the memo will print on reports. So if you need something that you know what it is today, but you may not know in six months when you're, run, you're looking at things and you're getting ready for tax time, if you need some kind of a note on there to remind you that, oh, that's the desk chair I bought, so it's an asset example, always put it in the memo because the memo is going to print on reports and it's going to be very useful. So remember that, that whichever part of the program you're in, if there's a memo, 
with that transaction, that's what's going to show on your reports and is going to be very helpful in the future. So uh, we always think we're going to remember that there's a lot of details in bookkeeping and we're not. So do yourself a favor and add a little memo. It will help you later on. So save and close. And entering an expense is as simple as that. Simple as that. Okay, another thing I wanna show you is see the little backwards clock here? You wanna go back in time. So you click on it and it shows the last few transactions that were entered. See that? So we can click on it, go right back to it, makes it easy. We realize that we entered one of the amounts. So again, we can go back. And this one doesn't have a name. So let's see if we look at that. This one is a credit card. They didn't enter a payee. So let's see, what is the expense? Automobile. It's an automobile expense for $34, but there's no payee. Did you guys see that? See, see how it doesn't show a payee right here? Okay, so like I mentioned with the memo, that's going to show in your reports. It's going to be very useful later on. When there is place for a payee, I suggest, strongly suggest you always enter a payee because today you might know that you stopped at 7 Eleven and you got $34 worth of gas. Well, three months from now, when the accountant asks you, what, what is that? There's no payee on it. What is it? And you have to go, I, I don't know. Then it's easier to enter the payee when you're doing it. So use your memo as your reminder, that's your post it notes, and always use a payee because that's going to stop a question later. Is that right? Is that wrong? Why didn't I have a payee in there? So you click on it and let's see if we can, what do we got in here that's maybe automobile? How about gas? Oh, look at there, tin, gas, and oil. Now, if we put that on there, it's an automobile expense, but now we know it's gas. So that's that can save things for later on. Now, with this one, automobile, $34, maybe it's not that critical, but you just want to be in the habit of entering your payees. You want to make that a habit early on because it will save you later. Because if that was a $720 expense and it said automobile, you might go, what was that? I don't remember that. Because especially as we get a little older, we don't always remember everything. So if we have the name in there, then we're gonna know. So um, I do suggest using the memo versus the description. The memo will print on a report. The description generally does not. So uh, there, there was one question. Yes, sir. It says, uh, so how do you add from writing a check to increase your inventory? Okay, say that again for me. So how do you add from writing a check to increase your inventory? To increase inventory? That is a really excellent question. And I don't know that I can answer it off the top of my head. And then there was a follow-up that says, is it best to add a subcategory under auto for auto gas? Yes, absolutely. Under automotive, you could have your gas and your 50-50. Uh, some people put their uh, auto insurance or some people put insurance then auto life liability. So you can have it that way or you can put under auto, you can put your gas, your insurance, your repairs, maybe rental, you know, if you have to rent vehicles. Uh, so yes, you can, you can most definitely do that. It'll give you a more precise report at the end of the time period. As for the inventory question, The way I know to enter inventory is you, 
well, one, you have to have it set up, but it wouldn't be, I don't think you'd do it as a check. I think you would do it more as a bill or an expense. So uh, I don't know that this company, let's see if they have inventory. So let's enter a bill and see what it does. Pick a company. Landscaping, okay, maybe the hardware company we would buy something. Let's see if they have any inventory. This is the when I did inventory, it's been a couple of years. It was on the desktop. And so that was a it was a little bit different, but you would add the inventory number. Uh, I don't know how much you guys want to sidetrack, but what we can do is we can close that without saving. And we can go here, I believe. Oh, products and services. Design, concrete, rock foundation. That one's an inventory. There's an inventory item there, products and services, inventory, rock item. And it is an R154-88. And please forgive me, I'm kind of winging it here. I've only done the inventory on the desktop, not online. Uh, the inventory to the online is fairly new. So go back to expenses. And we would add, we want expenses and we want to add a new one. So let's go expenses. Thank you. And we'll go new transaction and we'll do a bill. Now we'll see if we enter this, does it let us? It was an R154. No, it doesn't. Uh, I, I, I apologize if. Uh, You'll forgive me, I will make sure and have that question for you after class and I can email it to all participants. I apologize for not knowing it off the top of my head. So is there another question? I'm sorry, I couldn't answer that one. Uh, no, no new questions at this time. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that, everybody. Unfortunately, I don't remember 100% of everything. <laughs> Do my best. So let's close that. And we were talking about, I think we had moved from checks, we we're going to go into bills. Okay, so we've got a bill open. And what it's going to do, we'll go back to that hardware. And then we'll add, maybe it was supply, not inventory. And it was $25. And in the memo, we're going to put closed in this uh, landscape company. So we can, uh, we don't want to, we can save and schedule a payment because we know this is going to be due, say, on the 10th of next month. Maybe it's net 10 or net 30 plus 10, whichever it is. You can save and schedule a payment if you want to do that now or. You can save and do a new transaction or you can save and close. So if you want to schedule this payment, you know there's not gonna be any more throughout the month, then you can go to save and schedule. And here is where you get started. You wanna pay with a credit card, you wanna choose. So I don't know how much it'll let us do in the, let's see what we got, think and think and see. It won't let us continue. Let's see if we can get back real quick. Maybe, there we go. Okay, go back. So our bill, let's add another bill so I can show you. Uh, we can do pay bill. Okay, who are we going to pay? Let's see, who are we going to pay? Let's go to chins because we have gas throughout the month that we pay for and i'll we'll go ahead and add gas now this came up utilities gas and electric well that's not what we want so we're going to do add new and like the question said 
it's an expense and it is automotive. There we go. We're going to put it gas and we'll do the subcategory of automotive. So save and close. You know, it's just that simple to do it. And it was a $39.75 fill up, maybe in another state, not California. That's another state. So, and we'll do, we don't want to schedule the payment right now. We'll do save and new. And let's do one more. Very easy, easy. Oh, we got to pay our dental insurance. So we're going to do that. Go down here, we're going to put insurance. What insurances do we have? So you've had insurance, you have work with comp on all these different things. And let's see, how about health? I think they have something under health. Let's see. Okay. Oh, they don't. So we will put, start another one, health insurance. And we'll add, and it is an expense. It is an insurance, and it's health insurance, and we're going to put it under insurance. There we go. Now we have our health insurance, which includes dental, and that's $512.70. So now we say we're going to save and close. Save and close. Now we're all done. Okay. There we go. Save. Okay. Now we want to pay our bills. So this is the second half of the transaction. On entering the bill, you have entered your expense. But now QuickBooks knows that you have this expense out there that needs to be paid. So you do pay bills. And let's see, does that give us anything? No. All right. Oh, oh, I went too far. Forgive me. We'll go back. Now, these are what's due. You have four that are overdue and you have eight that are open. So there's eight total. Four of them are overdue and that's what the red mark is. So what account are you going to pay them out of? Pay them out of checking, savings. Which one are we going to do? The visa doesn't come up on the banking tabs. So we won't use this, but we're going to pay them out of our checking account. We want them today's date. That's where the start. We're going to print them later. We can print them now. And what do we want to pay? Well, do we want to pay the things that are overdue? Well, you always want to pay your PG&E because they're, they're, they're not real forgiving. Uh, let's see what else do we need to pay our insurance. That's always important. We need to pay our gas bill and our health insurance. And that will give us this is total payments to date. This is our balance. See, and it will show you. So if this is what you have in your account. This is what you need to pay. This is going to be your new balance. And you're going to go, well, I need a little more than $248. So I'm going to put off paying. Let's see. We're going to put off paying the insurance till next week. Oh, now good. That leaves me with $400 and $89, that's better. So you can schedule the payments online. And again, this is probably not gonna let us do it because we can't. You would go to your banking and schedule the payments. So you can do that. Uh, there was a, a question on payments. Yes, sir. Uh, it says, how do you track a payment if you use PayPal connected to a company credit card? PayPal connected to your, you, you would have your PayPal as an account over here in your banking. Your PayPal will be an account just like this. And there will be money going back and forth between PayPal and whatever checking or credit card you have it connected to. And I will say with PayPal, you have to be very careful when it's a transfer from one account to another versus actually paying or receiving money. 
because whether you're whichever account you're in, it's going to say PayPal and it's going to say the vendor or the customer. So you've got to be real careful which one's actually paying the expense and which one is transferring the money to PayPal to make the payment. So with your PayPal, you, you've got to be real careful and understand how that works because it can get real confusing. Uh, PayPal is not one of my favorites as a bookkeeper uh, because you're going to take money from your checking and put it into PayPal and then PayPal pays the expense. So you don't want to, in your checking, you want to make sure it goes to PayPal to pay versus, oh, that's where I paid so-and-so. And then you look at your PayPal and you do it again. So it doubles the expense and it doesn't take the money and put it into the PayPal. So you, you've got to be real careful with your PayPal, I, I must say. Uh, if you have a PayPal and you're having trouble with it, give me a call. I'll be more than happy to walk you through it on some tricks on how to keep that straight. But the PayPal can be, uh, can be a challenge. So I, I hope that's helpful. I hope did that answer the question. Uh, yes, yeah. She confirmed that she is doing it correctly, as you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you, it, it is a challenging one. Their statements are challenging also if anybody's balanced a PayPal statement. So, so that's checks, that's bills. You can schedule it at that time. You can schedule it later, you pay it out of whichever account. And then expense. And this one, might just be the easiest one to use. Uh, and enter an expense. Because as we learned earlier, this will let you pay from a credit card or a checking or a savings or whichever account you paid it out of. You can also have a petty cash set up and you'd be able to use it here. Uh, some companies use petty cash. Um, or they did at one point in time, I don't know now. Uh, things have changed so much over the last year, but it's gonna be basically the same. It's just, you're gonna enter again, instead of twice, you're gonna enter it once. So you're gonna enter your bills for things that you pay like on a monthly basis, and you can add them all in as you go. And then at the end of the month, these are what you're gonna pay. Expenses or checks for, are things that are paid now and paid continually through the month, just as they come up. So that would be your difference. But it's the same thing. Let's see, who are we gonna pay now? <laughs> Let's go down a ways. Ooh, how about pool cars? That's an interesting one. And we're gonna pay out of the credit card uh, today. And let's see, what did we pay pool cars for? Something under auto. How about auto maintenance? Maybe there's a maintenance category. Let's look. Maintenance and repairs. There we go. And maintenance on that was $89 for uh, well change. So, and we can even put that in here. Oil does not have a K, just in case you're wondering. Well change. And now and we paid it with our credit card and we can save and close. So it's, it's just that simple. It, it really is, it's just that simple. Um, so back to expenses. Uh, there yeah. was a couple of questions. Yes, sir. Uh, one of them was related to the PayPal one. Um, it says, uh, I'm assuming the Venmo is the same way. Um, as far as the way you set up PayPal, you could set up Venmo? Uh, Venmo, you usually don't set up, oh, let's see. Venmo, you can just, it's gonna come through in your banking. It's gonna come through as a transaction on whatever, whether it's a credit card or a checking account. So, so you don't set it up as a separate banking account. It's just going to, when you process in that payment, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, uh, when you process that in, you would have, you could put it with Venmo sales, 
or Venmo expense. You can put in the memo that it's Venmo, but I'll show you that you would not set it up as an account like PayPal because you're not gonna get a statement from Venmo. It's just an in and out into your checking. It's just done via Venmo. So I hope that answers that question and I'll show you something here in a little bit that'll explain that a little better. Uh, so yeah. was there another question? Uh, yes, there was. It says, uh, when, you, when you make a payment slash cut a check, does that go into approval or is it paid and posted right away? Well, if you enter a bill, that's not making a payment. If you pay a bill, that's going to be what you can do. Expenses. You want pay bill. Hold on. There we go. Pay bill. You can use this screen and you can select the ones that you want to pay if you have an approval type situation. And then it will do this. And I believe you can, can you print it from here? Oh, we'll let you print. I would have to look and see if there's some way to, uh, to present it as an approval. I, I don't use that service. So unfortunately, I don't know, but I can, I can research it and get back to you with an answer for pre-approval. of payments, one way you can do it is, uh, and I'm just winging it here. Yes, uh, right here, how we, these are our expenses. We're not in vendors, we're in expenses. So if we click total, these are what, is this what's up? We need vendors, excuse me. Here we go, vendors. This shows who we owe. So with this screen, you could also do it as far as what wants to be paid. So well, I don't, what did we do there? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't use approval. I, I honestly don't know if it's there or not. I, I would have to research it. So I apologize for not knowing that answer. You guys are really giving me some great questions today, which I love because it'll help me learn. And uh, I promise I will get back to you with that answer. So does that cover it? Brian, do we have another question? So approval. Uh, that, that's all for now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so where were we? Okay. Okay, so uh, credit cards, we can enter that through, if we go here to the banking, there's, we go to bank register, as was mentioned earlier, you can enter all your stuff here for your credit card. So if you have things throughout the month that are your credit card, you can just enter them here, or you can enter them through the expense and it will put them here. Here's the Bob's Burger joint that we did. So you see it shows up here. And then you can uh, make a bill payment. You can enter it all there. Services, create new, okay. Sales tax. I wanted to touch on sales tax just a little bit. You have over here on the side, you have taxes. And here, here is where you would set up your sales tax. And it's very simple. I, unfortunately, it won't let me show you in the, in the uh, test drive company. But if you go to your gear and your accountant settings, this is where you set up for your settings for the whole program, not a piece of it. And you can go in here and you want to make sure and turn on your sales tax. Here's your inventory. You turn that on. Advanced. So you would change the setting in here for your sales tax. So I thought I was in sales, but 
I don't do it every day. So uh, you would change the help, change your setting there. And tail says, and then it will change, uh, charge your sales tax. It would go to uh, sales. And we want to look at invoices. will add your sales tax uh, right when you do your invoice. And then it'll calculate it at the end of the month to the tax and automatically will add your sales tax for you. That's not a taxable item, I guess. Okay, let's reboot and get out of that. And let's go to checking. This is a place where a lot of people make more of it than it is. It's once you kind of understand how the checking part works, how the bank gives you the transaction and then how to tell QuickBooks, how that transaction, how to get it into QuickBooks, because it's a two-part process. Right now, all these transactions, 25 here, one here, seven here, those are all transactions. That the bank has said, hey, these went through the bank, and here they are. Now, now you have to tell QuickBooks what to do with them. So, that's what this is. You're telling QuickBooks what to do with the transactions that went through the bank. So we'll start with this one because there's one and this just might be easy. Now this one is a match. Generally, you can click the match and just put it through. But as you're learning, I do suggest you look at it a little bit and see. It should tell you uh, from example bank. So this was and they found the match, it's on the same date, it's from the right bank, and it's gonna record that match. So we can click match, and that disappears. And in a perfect world, these two things would be the same. But what can happen is that the bank has received something, but they haven't sent it to QuickBooks yet. So there's a little bit of a time lapse there. So sometimes these will match and sometimes they won't. Uh, generally, they will, they might not match if you have some outstanding items, some old things that you did that never cleared the bank, but you wanna kind of watch that and, and keep an eye on it. So that takes care of that one. Let's look at the MasterCard. Now this we have add, view, and match. We have three different things and look, Here's Bob's Burgers, 1897. And if we look at it, they found an exact, QuickBooks found an exact match for it. Bob's Burger Joint, it's from Bob's Burger Joint, the date, the amount are the same. So we can match that. Now you have to be careful. One of the things you wanna be careful of is the category. Sometimes Quicken makes its best guess. And And in making their best guess, they're not always right. And something you don't want to do if you can help it at all, you don't ever want to use the uncategorized. You don't want anything in uncategorized because you're just going to have to go out and go back and figure it out later. So you don't want to do that if you can help it. Now, this is, we received money from Amazon. So, Let's see, is there any Amazon in there? No, there isn't. So I know that we returned the office chair that we didn't want. So what I can do is I can put a category. The vendor is Amazon. Again, you want that vendor or payee in there. And got the Amazon is in there, so we're going to add it. Amazon. And it's a vendor, not a customer. And this does make a difference whether you put vendor, customer, employee, it's gonna make a difference when you go to running reports. 
especially at the end of the year, um, when you're doing things like your 1099 and your W-2s, you want to make sure that that entity you entered on what are their customer, their vendor, their employee. So it is important to pay attention to that. And so we're going to save it. Now we have Amazon in there as one of our vendors. And we had bought an office chair. So that was office expense. And we don't have a customer project to add it to because we're not doing that. And you can put in a memo down here as return office chair. There we go. And then we add that. And it disappears. Now, Laura Lamin Lamination, Laura's Lamination. We paid her to do something. Oh, look here, business detail, bank detail. Laura's Lamination business card. So we're gonna put this under, is Lara in there? No, she isn't, so let's put her in. And this will become less and less because you'll find that mostly you use the same vendors over and over. So once you get going, you won't do as much of this as you do in the beginning. Nomination, and we're gonna add it. She is a vendor. And uh, six one way, half a dozen the other business cards are an office expense or they're advertising. Uh, two schools of thought. It's a valid business expense, so it just depends on how you want to enter it. So we're going to put it under advertising. And you could do the subcategory. You could have advertising, and it's Facebook, it's Google, it's business cards, it's radio, if you want to break out your advertising. So that would be one thing you could do. We don't need to in this case. And we're going to put business cards. So we'll know what that is and we add it. Okay, now this one, look here. We have squeaky clean, must be the car wash. And we have dated 7 1 and 6 24. And it found too, it didn't match it, but it found too that it thinks it might be. So we open it up and we look at it. And it found a squeaky clean on 7 1 for 19.99. So we're going to pick, this is 7-1, so we're going to pick the one that says 7-1, same vendor, same amount. So we're going to match that. And I want you to watch what happens to the second one. Now, this one is no longer a view. It is now a match because it has only one per squeaky clean for that amount, and it's the same date. So now we can click match. So that works out very well. And then we have Norton Lumber and there's a match found. Let's look just to make sure. We have Norton Lumber Building Materials. That's who we paid. The date and the amount are the same. So we can say match. And same here, Tanny's Nursery. Tan Tanny's Nursery. And we have a match. So we do have bank details is Tanny's Nursery. And that's who we paid, same date, same amount, so we can match it. So now that takes care of everything in that one. If you have more accounts, they'll just scroll across and you can, uh, they'll scroll across here and you can have more accounts. It just depends on what you're doing. Now this one has 25 of them. Now, you just want to do the same thing we've been doing. And I'm going to scroll down. Is there any matches? So, yep, yeah, we made a deposit. So we know that's right. We match it. Now, this is Hicks Hardware. It matched to the same one. So we'll match that. Uh, we had another company deposit. That's good. And we paid our PG&E. There's a rule on that probably. So we could do that. Let's, uh, there's two transactions here. Let's look. See, now this is why you, you want to look because who did you pay? Was it Pam Stites? 
or was it books by Bessie because they're this, almost the same date with the same amount. So sometimes QuickBooks will make that educated guess and you know it's the other one. So you do wanna pay attention to that one. We know that this one was Pam, so we're good, we'll add match. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and match our PG&E and we paid pies cakes, ha, that's fun. And Travis Waldorn, we know we paid him. They found a match. Bank detail is Travis, so we're good. And this is how your Venmo, we had a question about Venmo. You don't wanna do Venmo as, as an account like up here because your Venmo is gonna come in. It's just gonna say Venmo. When you look at it, it down here in the bottom, it's gonna say Venmo. And then it'll have maybe a name or, an ex or like you bought Starbucks or whatever, it'll say something. So it's just gonna come through this. So you don't have to do both sides. You don't do it in and in out for Venmo. It's just whatever account it's attached to. It's gonna come through here. So you could set up a vendor or a customer as Venmo sales, or you can just do it and put Venmo in your memo and then put the customer or vendor here. So Venmo would be handled a little different than the, uh, the PayPal. And that's, that's why, because you're not gonna have Venmo up here as an account. It's only gonna be here. So I, I hope that's helpful because that's, that's how your Venmo will process through. So let's see, what do we got? We have books by Bessie. And we received money for books by Bessie. So books by Bessie is a customer and it's uncategorized income. And as I said, you don't want to do uncategorized because you're going to have uncategorized expense, uncategorized asset, and categories. You're going to end up with things in lots of different places that are uncategorized. And at the end of the uh, reporting period or the year for taxes, your accountant's going to go, what are all these? So one way to avoid that is for my clients, I always have, I always make an ask my accountant. So anything you don't know what it is, you can put it in there and then you want to run one report and everything's going to be in one place. But sometimes you don't want to stop what you're doing to stop and research one or two things that you can keep going, keep doing your data entry or your processing. And then at the end, you can go back, pull up the Ask My Account account. And then you have all those questions in one place and you can figure them out. And a lot of times, if you do that, by the time you get done, something else comes up. And now you know what that was that you put in ask earlier. So, so a lot of times it will work itself out and you don't have to research it. So you don't wait this way. You don't stop, start, stop, start. Uh, that always takes more time. So uh, if you have an Ask My Accountant, and uh, accountants seem to like it better too, because they automatically know, oh, okay, that says Ask My Accountant. So they, they know that's a question that you had or something you didn't know how to process. So we'll put it in as an expense, and we'll put it in as... Another thing they don't like is the other, but we're gonna use it anyway. And it's not a subcategory of anything. So if there's something you don't know what it is, that's a good way to go, okay, I want to finish my banking. And, as you, and if, when you go back and you change the category, it doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't change anything in your banking. It just takes it from one expense account to another. So uh, it's a good way to, to go on when you don't know what something is. Uh, Books by Bessie paid us $55. Let's see what kind of an income account. Here it's gonna tell you what type of account it is. And it should be, let's see if we got an income. Here we go. Uh, she gave us money. 
let's see, what did she get? She, we, for design, we designed something for her. So we're gonna add that. And this is a rental and we've got a refund, or money coming in and money going out. Okay, so a rental is, we'll put it in A1. We'll add it at the vendor. And I would assume this is the equipment rental, would be my best guess. Equipment rental right there. It has equipment rental right there. And we're not going to apply it to a customer. And we can add it. Now, when we go to what happened to our other A1 rentals, they disappeared. Oh, they're there. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna go A1 rentals, A1, and we're gonna put it under that same category. And that's very handy. If you type in the first few letters of something, it will pull up everything that has that, makes it easy. That's equipment rental. And even though we paid it, but it wasn't as much as we thought, so we got a refund because some of this expense going out, some of it's money coming in. Well, you put it against that same expense account because the rental wasn't whatever it was. We got $200 back because we took it back early. So wouldn't it be nice if it worked that way? And we have, here's our other A1 rental. And if this is something we're gonna do all the time, okay? This right here, we're gonna have this A1 rental on a continuing basis. There's something right here called create a rule and they're wonderful because if you if they fit all this criteria, it automatically puts it in what you want. So let's create a rule because that repeated three times. We're gonna put it A1 and this is just what you're naming it. So you know when it comes up. So it's money out of checking account and we want it to say, a, why don't you say A1 rental? Does it say A rental? Okay, let's see what it does. We're going to save it. Now we have a rule. And the next time you do it, it will come up here in the rules. Maybe you can go to rules. Thank you. So see now the next time it comes up in your banking feed, it will come up down the side and it will say and then you know what it is. Let's see if we've got any names that repeat so I can show you how it comes up. So we don't want to see description. Oh, there's Bessie's books came up again. Let's see if we've got anything else that's a repeat. Okay, we'll do Bessie's books. So I'm gonna open that. We're gonna say create a rule. Oh, Bessie's books, that's bookkeeping. How clever. I didn't realize that earlier we did that. Uh, I'm sorry, I tend to ramble. Okay, so this is going to be Bessie's books. My grandmother came with this. Uh, we want it to be books by Bessie. And it will always be money out of the checking. It will always have this phrase. It's an expense, legal and professional bookkeeping. And you can save that. Oh, let's see. This rule name contains, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't like the apostrophe. So we'll take that out. Now let's see if it'll let it say, look at that. Wonderful. Now to take both of them. Now we had two that said Bessie's books and see they're both wrong because it picked up on the other one and it processed both of them. But it will come up as rule over here on the side and it'll be, it'll just be another uh, thing here and it'll have everything so you can read it. I thought it would show us that one. I'm sorry that it did. Uh, this one has two matches. So again, the same thing. It's squeaky clean. It's on 617, so we're going to match that. 
and we're going to match. We're going to go ahead. We're pretty certain about these, so we're going to match them and take care of those. We'll kind of look them over, make sure they look good. Now this one, but there's nothing there, so let's look at this one. Okay, this one is oh no banking digits from another bank, and they're matched to this one. Now, do we know that this happened? Because this isn't bank detail. This is just something QuickBooks is saying, hey, I think this is it. So this is why sometimes you have to be careful with your match. Generally, they're okay, but there are ones that come up like this. Now, uh, 55 Twin Lane, they made a payment of $50. I remember that it was last week, they gave me a check. And so I know I can go ahead and match this. If I don't remember that, I would go back and research it and find out what that is. A lot of times you can go to the bank and you can see a copy of the deposit and verify that that's what it is. Um, let's see what else we got. Oh, we have our cool cars match. You know, that's right. They paid us for their landscaping. And this one again does not have a description or a payee. So this one, I would probably go look at the bank and make sure I know what that is. So I'm putting it in the right place. So, because it has no information and this doesn't give me any information. So I would go to the checking account and verify and make sure I know what that is. So I would, that's what I would do in that case. And if you wanna skip one and leave it there, you can, that's fine too. Uh, we have one more match for the insurance. We know we paid the insurance because it was a big one and we remember that. Now these just say add. So these you just gotta look at and see what's what. This is Chin's gas. So yeah, you know you pay Chin's gas all the time. So you put in your vendor or payee because you want it on those reports. And it says job expense equipment rental. Well, that's what QuickBooks guessed. That's not what it is. That's gas. So let's type in gas and see we paint it. Now it's in the right one. Now we can add it. And we do the same thing with Hicks Hardware. And see now put it as automobile gas. So obviously Hicks Hardware is not gas. So it does say Hicks Hardware, so we're good there. And we know from Hicks Hardware, we buy supplies. So there's supplies, S-U-P, supplies right there. So we save that. And Mahoney mugs, I would guess that's, I don't know, what do you guys think it would be? Mugs, would that be advertising you bought some coffee mugs? With Mahoney mugs, would that be a coffee shop? I don't know. Now, if you go to Mahoney mugs or use Mahoney mugs, you probably know what that is. But we're gonna put it in as advertising. We're gonna try and see what it looks like to, to be able to hand out some cups or some water bottles and see. So we're gonna do that. And we're gonna put down here, this is uh, water bottles. The bottle has two teeth. And we're gonna add that. And Tim Mahoney Mason, we paid him, ooh, 666. I don't like that number, we always change it. Give them an extra dollar. So here we go. This is, we didn't buy supplies, we paid him for his services. So that could be contract labor, it could be sublet labor, it could be professional fees, it could be cement work, whatever it's gonna be. The categories, need to be what you know what they are. Just because I call it cement work, you might wanna call it concrete. You might wanna call it professional services. You might wanna put it under sublet labor. It's these categories, as long as it's a valid expense, the IRS doesn't care what you call it. They might say, put it over here, but it's a valid expense. So you want those categories to be what you know they are, your terminology. 
what works for your company. So uh, for me, the masonry, I, I would probably put concrete work. And we would have in his vendor, we would have him down at the 1099 with his number. And then that way, when we do our 1099s at the end of the year, we know what it is, but we have it under concrete work. And this is, um, why is it, why is it wanting to put it under category? Here we go. We're going to put him under concrete work. Isn't that what I said? I lost it. Let's try it again. It's not cash on him. Otherwise, it's not giving me the other ones. Well, this should come up as expense. I'm not understanding why it's not. But we'll put here concrete work. And save the pose. And Oh, I don't know. Hmm, concrete. Let's try it one more time. It's not cooperating with me. Concrete work. That. And make sure that's there. Hello, there we did it. So it's Tim Phillip Masonry. He does concrete work for us. And it's an expense that we'll pay him. We'll give him a 1099 at the end of the year. And now that takes care of everybody. That's all the accounts are all included. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about app transactions. The one that I come across most often that people use this for is the square. And you set up your square, you connect it to your checking account, and you will, when you do your banking, you go to app transactions, you process those as paid or add or match or whichever they are. And then when you open the banking, all those transactions will come up as a match on this site. So if you're going to use the square, which I found it very useful, very user-friendly, uh, you do have to set it up correctly but uh, doesn't take much. You just use that handy gear, tell it things where to go, what account it goes into, and what expenses they are as far as square fees. You wanna make sure those go into the right category. They also have square loans and you can set that up that it pays, it pays your square loan. And so you process them in your app transactions. And then when you go to your banking, you match them because QuickBooks knows they're there. Rules, as I said, were Things that are going to repeat over and over, they're going to be the same thing. You pay the utilities every month, you pay the phone every month, you pay your office supply place for your copier rental, whatever it is where you're paying every month or something that you use all the time, you want to set a rule and then that'll save you time. You just look it over and go click, 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 and it goes right in. Your tags, that's something fairly new to QuickBooks. I personally haven't found any need to use it. Uh, if you use your memo, where it would come in really handy, and that'd be more for an advanced class or the next uh, level up class, is if you have more than one location. If you have... Uh, you can use it to track your advertising. You can use it to track locations. You can use it to track a lot of different things, but generally a small company is not going to need that, especially if you use the memos because that's going to end your chart of accounts correctly, then you're not going to need those. So that's going to be more for larger companies. This right here, the receipts is very handy dandy. You can upload them from your computer. So those ones that the, invoices that you get emailed to you, you can upload them right into your QuickBooks. When, okay, God forbid you're ever audited, the, quick, uh, the IRS is gonna wanna see all your receipts, every piece of paper. 
they want to want to see a piece of paper for every single transaction. And if you don't have it, I've seen them take out the entire category if you're missing one receipt. I've seen some that say, okay, you got 95% of them, we'll let it go. It just depends on the auditor that you get. Some of them are more lenient and work with you, and some of them are hard line. So you want to make sure you have your receipts. So you can upload them from your computer. You can upload them from your Google Drive. You can forward them from your email. The other thing you can do is on your phone, which we all have with us at all times, you can open the QuickBooks app on your phone. And I tell you, they've got one of the best apps I've used. QuickBooks has an amazing app. You can do mostly everything right from your phone, especially for small business or solopreneurs uh, or just a few employees. You can do this stuff right from your phone. You can send an invoice, you can accept a payment, you can check your banking, and you can snap a receipt. And snap a receipt is as simple as opening the app, select snap, and you take a picture of it. And lickety split, it adds it to your QuickBooks. You can, at that moment, you can say, it goes to, it attaches to this banking transaction. Now QuickBooks has evidence of that transaction that the IRS will accept. And if you don't have that little piece of paper, that's okay because the IRS will accept it as a snap in QuickBooks or an email that was forwarded or a picture you uploaded from your computer, IRS will accept it. So you can attach it. Once you snap the picture, you can attach it right then. Or if you just want to get the trans quick, take the picture of the transaction, snap it, and then go on with what you're doing, then you can go back later and you just swipe and go, okay, this is, belongs to this one, swipe, that belongs to this one. And at the end of the day or the week or the month, you can just sit and, and scroll through them and tell them which to attach it to. Or if you don't ever attach them, it's okay, they're there. You're more organized if they're attached, but they're still there in case the IRS ever wants to look at them. So uh, one other thing I will mention about receipts, uh, nothing to do with QuickBooks, but the uh, thermal paper, the one that feels funny, uh, in the sun it turns black or it fades out. So if nothing else, always snap your thermal paper receipts. Now there's not a lot of them anymore, but they are there. And I've just recently been working with a customer and he had a lot of them and he lost a lot of receipts because they just faded. There was nothing on them anymore. So uh, the thermal receipts, make sure you snap those. So uh, you wanna make sure and do that. Now, as far as reconciling goes, I don't have a statement, so I don't have an amount to make it to, but we'll talk about it. We'll go to our banking and we'll go to our- Cindy, we did have a couple questions. Did you want to save them to the end? No, you can go ahead. That's fine. Go oh, ahead. Uh, it's, uh, the first one is a uh, payment question. Can QuickBooks record purchase orders to pay bills? Yes, you can you can set it up to use purchase orders. Yes, you, you would you would go to your gear up here and it's in your settings for your company. You tell it that you want to use purchase orders. So yes, you can do that. Okay, perfect. Uh, the second question is: Wouldn't you need to reduce from your office furniture and not office expenses? We have to track our inventory off office furniture for the oh okay uh, I, I think what I think what they're saying is I recorded it as office expense mm -hmm. what just depends on the individual company uh, if you have if you have to inventory your office ex furniture then yes you would do it not under but office furniture uh, most of the time with smaller companies, 
you don't necessarily inventory your office furniture. It's just an office expense. Now, if it's an asset, then that's different. If you sold an asset that you need, then you would want to apply the money to that asset. But generally it's not an asset. It depends on the accountant and the business, usually three to five hundred dollars. Uh, if you get up into that price range, then you want to make it an asset. If it's under that amount, then your accountant will give you whatever they're comfortable working with. Kind of varies depending on accountant. Then you would do it. It was a, it's an office expense, not an not an asset. So if it's an asset, yes, it would be processed completely different. It would go against the furniture. And on that same question, they say. They also have to figure out depreciation for tax returns at the end of the year. Yes. Uh, did, did you want to speak on that a little bit? Well, the depreciation would be calculated by your accountant. It's not going to be calculated by QuickBooks. That's going to be something that, that your accountant does at the end of the year. That, that wouldn't be done uh, with QuickBooks. But is speaking of depreciation, that's with the assets. So if they give you a, if they want you to asset every chair, every desk, then you enter it that way. You don't enter it as an office expense. You enter it as an asset and you say what it is. Uh, we can do that if you want. It's very simple. Uh, it's just, well, we don't even need to go to banking. We can just go to uh, expense. And office, office depot, and we'll add them. They're a vendor. It came out of checking. And we're going to go down to the memo. We're going to put a uh, blue. Office, oh, gracious, office chair, front desk. Whatever works for you so you know what it is later on, you can put the memo, whatever you want it to be. Uh, and then you would just put it under your asset account. There's not a furniture, but let's see, category. We should have one that says assets, sub accounts, sub accounts. Expenses, assets right here. So inventory, prepaid expenses, category, uncategorized, remember, don't use those. Uh, the undeposit funds get used every once in a while, you gotta check it. Uh, truck depreciation, you know, they don't have an asset for office furniture, so we can make one. Office furniture. And we'll add that in this case. Why is it not giving me asset? I don't understand. Office should be, it should come up asset. I don't know why it's not giving me an asset. Let's do it this way. Instead of setting it up here on the fly, let's close this and let's go over to the chart of accounts and make a, a, an asset. So if we go to accounting, chart of accounts, this is where all the categories are. Okay, let's see, can I move this so I can get to that? There we go. Okay, this is all those categories we're starting. This is where they are. And this is where they're going to get pulled from to make your reports. So let's see if we've got one here that says asset. Let's see. No. Okay. So we're going to do to make that. We're going to do a new. Well, I don't know why it's not letting me make an asset account. I don't understand. Uh, type of account. I don't know why it's not letting me make an asset account. I don't know. Uh, let's do, let's 
see if we can edit this one and make it what we want. Let me give it to us so I can show you. Accumulated depreciation. Oh, that's doing under depreciation. Let's see. Fixed assets right here. That's what I was looking for. I wanted to show you. So you can do fixed assets furniture. And this is going to be desk chair. I don't know why. I don't want it under, under truck, of course. So we're going to take that off. Now it should show up the way we want. Yes, we know that. So, yes, I want to do it. It's not letting me do it. No. That's how you would make one for your office furniture. And if we go back to expenses, oh, no, no expenses, excuse me, expenses, there we go. So we'll go back to the office, it should pop up, there we go. We're gonna pay it out of checking. Our category, I don't think it took it. Let me put desk chairs, design income. So let's just pick an asset account. It won't show the one we want, but that's what you would do. Equity, liabilities, income, so the plan. Oh, I went too far. Let's see. Where's our asset accounts? Here we go. So we'll put it here just because we don't have one that says office chairs and you could do it there and then it would make it an asset and it would pour it up under that account. So that's not exactly how you do it, but I hope it gives you the idea and then that makes it an asset. So the QuickBooks does a lot of things and it just depends on what you need for your business. What questions you have for what you're doing. It'll do a lot of things that 90% of people never need or never use. Uh, if you're in a larger company, you're going to use more than if you're in a smaller company. But uh, mo it, it'll do amazing things. And if it's something that you need, you can research it and make it work. It's an amazing program to be able to use. I hope that helped a little bit with that question. Uh, yes, it, it did. And uh, she had a follow up. Yes. Uh, it said, how would you list an item from inventory that was damaged or broken under your cash account? Should you have two cash accounts? For example, one is actual cash payment and cash spent and one cash account that isn't actually used funds, but listing items that were broken. Hope this makes sense. Okay. Well, there, there's a couple ways you can do it. And you can use a inventory damage account. Uh, that to me is easier or name the cash account cash inventory damage. And I would make it a separate account for only the inventory damage items to make sure that that's kept separate. So yes, definitely a separate account. And I would make sure that that's the only transactions that go in and out of that account or anything that has to do with inventory damage. You can also, uh, you're gonna have your inventory adjustments. Uh, sometimes that happens. Uh, you do the inventory and you count, you thought you had 12 and you only have 10. So you have to let your accounting know that, that there's two of them that disappeared. Uh, so you would do, have an account for your inventory adjustments and for your inventory damage. So yes, keep them separate and make sure you label them and use them for only those items. So Perfect. I hope that answers the question. Uh, yes, she said, thank you. Uh, and the next question was, uh, can you list Venmo instead of a check number? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, leave without saving. You can do an expense. I, I think this is what they're asking, but you can do it. Uh, you want it instead of your payment method right here, you would just do Venmo and you add it, save the name. So is that what they're asking? So Office Depot, uh, checking because the Venmo is connected to your checking account. So 
your payment method would be Venmo. So I, I think that's what they're asking. Yes, Mel? Uh, yes, yes, that, that is correct. Uh, or she just uh, said, in the column that shows a check number, do we list Venmo? In the column that says check number? Yes. Okay, is she talking about on the check register? Uh, yes. Okay, I don't know, let's look. Leave without saving. Now we're gonna go to our banking. And we're gonna go to bank register. She's wanting it to show up a uh, reference number. She's wanting it to show up here. So if you do have a check, then you can put it there. If we do an expense, I think it'll have something also expense. Yeah, you would just put the number, you could just write in more right here. Is that, is that what she's asking? Uh, yes, yes, that was- uh, Office yes, Depot, was... and, then, and then it'll come up. If you do the reference number or the check number, it will come up on reports. So you'll know that that was in and out of the Venmo account. And uh, let's see, I don't know if we can do it for deposit. You know, leave without saving. Now, if you do a deposit, it's not saying, uh, you can't do a reference number, but you can make the pay a payee the Venmo. Just add that. And it's a customer they pays you. So then the payee would be Venmo versus an item number. So that would be how you could track your Venmo. You can also do it through your uh, expense account. You can have an expense account that's Venmo. If it's always the same thing, you can just have it as Venmo. Instead of, you know, like if all your Starbucks are on Venmo, and that's all you use it for. You could have it as its own expense again, or category they call it. So does that answer that question? Uh, yeah, yes, it, it did. And uh, if payee is Venmo, then how do you list a payee if they are a vendor? Okay, so if we're res they're a vendor, you're going to do it as an expense, right? Okay, so let's do it as an expense. And your number is Venmo, and your payee is, I don't know, whoever it is. You would do it that way. So the Venmo, when you're paying an expense, would just be in place of a check number, it would say Venmo. And then you would have your payee. So does that answer the question? Uh, yeah, yes, it does. Uh, and then it says, uh, if the vendor lets say, get a reimbursement or return. Oh, so it would be money coming in. Then what you'd want to do is do, instead of doing it here, deposit, leave that without saving. You could do, you could do it right here. So uh, the payee would be Venmo. You can do it that way and then put your it's refund from whomever, or you can do it the other way around. And this is, uh, what was it, Bessie something or other? Oh, I didn't put it in the wrong one. Bessie, uh, stop it. Okay. Bessie. Okay, she's going to give us money. Did I do deposit? Yes. And then you could do Venmo here in your memo. And she refunded us $50. And it was for her bookkeeping. So you could put either way. You could do Venmo as the AE and the memo is the vendor or vice versa. Uh, yes, she, she said uh, to show the credit back into the checking account and that it was from this particular vendor that gave us a refund. Okay, uh, or yeah, yeah, there was a follow-up question that said, could you okay. list the reimbursement via Venmo or PayPal under the cash account and list the bank account? Okay, now 
you, you, you have to remember Venmo and PayPal are done two different ways. Venmo is only into the one account. So you're not doing two accounts. So you're gonna do Venmo transactions like this. PayPal transactions are gonna be done differently. They're in and out of the checking and they're in and out of PayPal. It's two-sided. Whereas Venmo is only one-sided and only one account. You just wanna know which ones are Venmo account, Venmo transactions. So say, that said, what question do they have now? Uh, the follow-up to that was um, to show the credit back into the checking account and that it was from this particular vendor that gave us a refund. Okay. You would do it just like this. We, there, the, the vendor, Bessie's books, I pay them for bookkeeping. Well, I overpaid. So now she has to give me $50 back. So I'm doing a deposit into the checking account. So is, is that what they're, you would do it like this and then you would just put Venmo in the, in the memo. Uh, yeah, she, she just followed up and said, okay, not PayPal, but let's say cash or Venmo refund list in the cash paid account, giving the credit to the checking listing vendor uh, if you get actual cash from a store. Oh, okay, okay. That's gonna depend on how you handle it. Some people have, up here where it says checking, they'll have one that says cash on hand, right here. So you would use your cash on hand account and you would put the deposit here. So you would do deposit and you would do, do the exact same thing. It's a deposit, it's from SC. And it's green cash, so this is the cash on hand account, and we're making a deposit of $50. Save it. Oh, it wants it again. This is bookkeeping. And then we save it. And then you have $50 cash in your hand. And then you can take that 50 and put it, deposit it into an account, transfer it from, you know, make a deposit into your checking, or maybe you have a, uh, a cash drawer or a cash box where you keep, because you need cash on hand. So do, does that answer? Uh, yes, she said understood uh, and thank you. Good. Uh, the, the next question uh, was, uh, let me find it here. Uh, I think it was, what about Square? Is it the same as Venmo? A Square, um, if, if you're gonna use Square, you can do it like we're talking for Venmo, or you can do Square as, as, your, as an add-on app, app transactions, you can add, QuickBooks has pretty much an endless list of different apps that you can attach and use in connection with QuickBooks. Square is one of the base, obviously Amazon Business is too. I haven't used that one. Um, Amazon Business is a whole nother ballgame. We could do a class just on that. But uh, the Square, you want it to me, in my opinion, it's easier to add it as an app not as a bank account, but as an app. Because as the transactions come in, you go to your app transactions first when you're processing your banking and you tell it, add, 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 add on your app, Square app. But then you go from your app transactions and when you come back to banking to match in this section, you're gonna scroll down and it's gonna be match, 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 match. It does it all for you. So that, that would be, uh, to, me, it, to me, it's the easiest way to, to process the square transactions. So I, I hope that answered that question. Uh, yes, perfect, perfect. And there's uh, three more questions. It says, okay. can you please show the steps to create a PO? How to create a PO? 
Yes. Let's see. Purchase order right there. And the vendor is, who's our vendor? What are we gonna use? A purchase order from from Hicks Hardware. There we go. Um, so it gives all the information. If it's shipping, you can have it shipped wherever you want. Put that on there that's a date. And then there are, look at that. It already gave us some, some information. So you put in what you want, your product or service, and your quantity and your rate. Put in the customer score if you want, and then you save it. That's as simple as that. Here, let's see. Let's go back and look at another one. Same thing as Tim's Masonry. And we got a, a rock fountain from it. So you, you save and close, save and send, or save and end. So does that, I hope that answers that question. Uh, yes, yes it does. Uh, the next question was, can she show how to run an inventory report to see what you have on hand? Okay, your reports are all gonna be over here in reports. And this is the handy dandy little search. So if we put in inventory, here we go. Inventory evaluation, detail and summary and physical inventory worksheet. So this one, when you would use to count to see if you, if your QuickBooks says you have three, you have three, so you would do your physical count, but you would just do it right here. And I wanna show you, I don't know why, but in reports, 90% of the time it's gonna show just like this. Well, I don't, I wanna change it. So if you scroll up, you can change it. You can change the time period. You can change, uh, it's grouped by what category. And then when you make these changes, do run report. You can also customize your reports. So uh, report the reports in QuickBooks, whether you're using the desktop or online, in my humble opinion, are lacking. Uh, they're easy to customize and uh, in my opinion, it's worthwhile to take a little time and customize them. So when you run the report, you get what you want. Because just like I said, you name the categories what you want. You want your reports to be what you want, not what QuickBooks thinks you want. So it's worth, to, worth it to take the time to customize your reports and it'll, it saves them for you and they run beautifully. But if you, it'll always open like that. Scroll up, make your changes and then do run your report and it'll run it again. So that works out nicely. If we click this, that disappears and we can see the whole report. So that's how you would do it. And uh, add notes. Uh, sometimes you can change them a little bit. What do you want to show? You want it to show what was created by, you want to show the SKU number. Uh, this one has a show more. You can do first in, first out. You can show quantity on hand. It just depends on what you want in the report. We don't need first out. We don't need that quantity value. We want quantity, we want rate, we don't care. Um, there might be a product number transaction type we don't need, uh, compact or not. Uh, and then let's see, so it'll change it. And then I think turn off for me, there you go. See, now it took out those things. So you can, you can change it and make it what you want it to be. So this is the inventory that they have. They have a beginning balance. They have so many sprinklers. They have a total of 27 fountains. So uh, it's just what you make the report what you want, but it would be the detail and the summary report, I think is what came up with wasn't inventory. Yeah, you can do the summary. I don't know which one I ran, but. So that, that would be how you would run the reports. I hope that's helpful. Yes, uh, very helpful. And that was actually the last question uh, we had. 
Okay. Well, I don't have anything else. That's all I had for today's class. There was two things that came up. Uh, Pre-approval of payment and uh, something about the inventory. So I will uh, put together some information on how to do pre-approval for accounts payable. And I can uh, have Brian email that to you guys. And if there's any questions you have, it doesn't have to be during the class. You're more than welcome to call me or email me. I'm happy to help if I can. Um, I appreciate you taking your time to be here with, with me today. And I hope you learned something. And I look forward to seeing you on our next class. Awesome. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, can you share your uh, contact info? Uh, do you have a yeah. copy of that? Yes. yes, I can. Let me see here. I do believe I have it. Let's see. Right there. As it says, time is one of our most precious gifts. Thank you for sharing some of yours with me. And there's my information. If you need me for anything, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm happy to help.